Good morning. It is six o'clock this Thursday, June 2nd. I'm Leanne Denyer. Now we are live on Church Street. The Hanover High Jazz Ensemble is jamming away right now. Today was the first day of performances. We begin with breaking news this morning. Four Vermonters wanted for murder have been found in San Diego. San Diego police found Eric Avril, Maya Barber, Allison Gee. The Clinton campaign just confirmed a few minutes ago that Bernie Sanders will be attending a rally in New Hampshire tomorrow. Plattsburg, let's take a look at this snow. It's really soft and powdery. It's not too hard, but you can pick it up and really just let it crumble in your hands. You get out there, what, Monday? Monday, yeah. Did some moving. Yeah. Get like that. Get your groove thing. Get your groove thing. <laughs> we need to right. stop doing that immediately. <laughs> in New York State, there is not a statute of limitations when it comes to homicide cases. Investigators say if and when they find their suspect, they plan to prosecute him or her fully, bringing justice to Don decades after her killing. About 8 o'clock this morning when Gene Palmer walked out of those doors just behind me. He's a free man today after serving four months in the jail for his role in the escape from Dannemora last year. He didn't have too much to say as he got into his car, but he did say that while he didn't want to officially comment, this was not an appropriate time for him to speak out. Gene Palmer clutched his belongings as he walked out of the Clinton County Jail. Mr. Palmer, how are you feeling this morning? When asked if he wished to comment. No comment at this time, but thank you for the opportunity to speak. He declined. A red van met the former CEO outside after he served four months of a six-month sentence. In court, he admitted that he, in part, contributed to the escape of two inmates. Guilty. The former corrections officer's guilty plea sent him to jail. He received a six-month sentence as part of a deal with the state for his role in the escape from Dannemora. On June 6, 2015, Richard Matt and David Sweat broke out of Clinton Correctional. Officials say Palmer passed hacksaw blades hidden in hamburger meat to Matt and Sweat, essential to cutting their way to freedom. The late February plea deal meant that there would be no trial. Palmer's attorney spoke to us from his sentencing. It would have been a very difficult trial, so we're happy that it finally is over, and we're happy that we were able to come to an agreement on most everything. The judge sentenced Palmer to six months at Clinton County Jail. He's getting out early for good behavior. The 57-year-old pleaded guilty to one felony charge of promoting prison contraband and two misdemeanors, one for official misconduct, the other for promoting prison contraband. Outside the jail, officials say they hope his release is another step forward towards closure and moving on past the events that paralyzed the region. An alumni football game started off as a fundraiser. We're all just playing this game. We're trying to raise money for the football program we love. And while it was that, to many of the players on the field, it was much more. I was going to be here. I was going to pick Joe up, actually. We were going to come together. I, for me, there was nobody like him. He was just such a great big brother. They both are. Plattsburgh High School alum Joseph Congelosi died May 25th after a fire broke out at his Margaret Street home. He had planned to join his former teammates and other alumni on the field to raise money for the school's pigskin program. We miss him and we're going to um, you know, acknowledge the fact that we are a man down. Uh, Joe's supposed to be on the orange defense with us and uh, he's not today. A typical game starts with 11 on the field. So what we're going to do is we're going to have him, um, you know, we're going to start with 10 guys. His brother Chris, we've asked his younger brother Chris to come in and play. Joe's brother Chris waited on the sidelines as they kicked off. He joined the game wearing his brother's number, 33. He was the first to shake your hand if you made a great play. I'd like to know who got it. What if you messed up? Laura says number 33, Joe. The game featured Hornets from the class of 1970 all the way through the 2015 class. Organizers expect to raise hundreds of dollars for the teams to come. At halftime, players presented Joe's mother with a game ball. The game is dedicated to Joe. Signed by all who came out. It's just such an honor and it feels, it's just comforting knowing that he's remembered. In Plattsburgh, Leanne Denyer, WPTZ News Channel 5.
I can't believe that the secret really has stayed this long, that nobody has leaked anything. Uh, Dawn was somebody's daughter, somebody's sister, somebody's niece. The case we're referring to is a 1984 cold case of a homicide. It's unsolved. It's been 32 years. We are looking for any new information, looking for people out there who have information, who have been holding out for the right time. As they have for 32 years, New York State Police and the Plattsburgh Police Department investigators are working together. We're hoping that somebody has that information. Uh, we feel strongly that there is information out there. To figure out who killed her. Don Swojak uh, lived in the city of Plattsburgh. She was a college student. She loved to dance, loved to party. I don't remember exactly when she first started coming around at the bar. Connie Collins knew Don before she died. Don was last seen between 1.30 and 2.30 in the morning on August 17th at a downtown bar called Blair's. There was a lot of drugs, a lot of partying. We were a rough crowd, and I know for a fact nobody wanted to say anything. Nobody wanted to talk to the police. The hangout was tailored to the gay community. I just think it was a tough time for gay people, and nobody really wanted to talk to anybody. We kind of had like our own little community where, where we felt safe. Investigators say tension between police and the community at the time may have stopped some of Don's friends and other witnesses from speaking up. This is a copy of one of the original flyers Don's friends pasted around town in the hours after she disappeared. The originals remain with police as evidence. This case so far relies heavily on three pieces of evidence, a boot, a belt, and a knife. The boot, the piece of belt, and the knife were found over on this side. Lieutenant Scott Beebe tells us new reviews of the evidence and the timeline in which police collected it offer new ideas about what could have happened here. Don disappeared on August 17th. A local business owner says he found a lone boot in the alleyway near Blair's August 20th. He turns it into police on August 21st, bringing officers to the alley in search of more evidence, but they find nothing. But that wouldn't be the case for much longer. Friends came up with a piece of the broken belt and the knife. According to police, friends notified officers they had spotted additional items in the alleyway just hours after police found nothing there. In reviewing all the uh, uh, reports, the information, we're confident that the city of Plattsburgh police would have located that evidence during their search. 32 years later, investigators now believe someone planted some if not all of those items. We strongly suspect that some or all that evidence was planted at that location to uh, throw authorities off at the time during the search for her. Don's case remained a missing person investigation for about a month. The search ended at a cornfield in Beekman Town when a farmer found Don's body wearing the other boot and the belt found a month earlier. An autopsy showed Don died from blunt force trauma to the head. Personally, I think it's somebody that knew her. I don't think it was a stranger. I'm willing to bet it might have been even somebody from that core group that hung at the bar on a regular basis. Collins says she was there with friends the night Dawn vanished. We were into things we didn't really want to be talking to the police, not so much that we knew might what happened to Dawn, but we didn't want to be involved in other things. <laughs> but police would still like to talk to anyone who knows anything about this case. They hope someone names a suspect. Meanwhile, they are using DNA technology they didn't have in 1984. All the evidence that has been collected during the course of the investigation is being resubmitted to the New York State Police Crime Lab. Police hope with new tools, old evidence will bring new leads. I have my suspicions on a few people. Collins says she's grateful the city of Plattsburgh honored her friend by naming the alleyway in Don's honor in 2014. The place police will return to until this homicide is solved.